Hey guys, it's History Behind the Warrior, and today we're going to be talking about the top 5 characters that will not be returning in Mortal Kombat 11. Now there is obviously going to be a criteria for this list, so a character here can appear within the game as an NPC, but not as a playable character. I'll be taking into account their relevancy, as well as the hints that we've been given at the end of Mortal Kombat X, as it will give us a rough idea of who will be in the game, and who won't be in the game. I also will be completely excluding guest characters, as they don't play a significant part in the story. I also won't be including obvious characters on this list that are dead, such as Baraka, and I'll be talking about lesser known characters which people don't actually know too much about. So hopefully this will educate you all about some of the characters that most likely will not be returning in Mortal Kombat 11. Now at number 5 we have Ermac. Now Ermac is certainly one of the cooler characters of the Mortal Kombat series, but it seems like over the past decade, the character has lost a lot about him what people love, discarding his very kind of ninja-esque look for pretty much a sorcerer's appearance. Now Ermac is certainly beloved by fans, he's by no means a bad character, but with the writers of the Mortal Kombat story, many of the old characters seem to be getting killed off, a prime example again being Baraka and the many fatalities we've had in the comic books. Now they won't kill him off for no reason, the reason why I'm saying he most likely will is due to his ending in Mortal Kombat X where Shang Tsung appears and drains him of his soul. Now the likelihood of this is extremely high, because the next game lacks a sorcerer like Quan Chi, so Shang Tsung will most likely take this spot. Now this isn't entirely guaranteed, because you see, in Mortal Kombat 9, Shang Tsung's soul is also put within Sindel, so maybe Shang Tsung comes out of Sindel instead of Ermac, mostly due to the fact that Ermac is a lot more popular than Sindel, but due to the character ending, I've decided to put him on this list here. Now I personally wouldn't like to see this character die, as Ermac has always been a very popular ninja, and although he's never really been a key component of the main campaign, he in many cases feels like an essential character in the roster, so who knows, he might be in the next game or might not. The chances are more or less extremely 50-50. Now at number 4 we have Shijenko. Now Shijenko isn't really due to make an appearance in this game, as he first kind of appeared in Deception, but due to Cassie's ladder ending, on top of his appearance within the comics, it seems like they're certainly going in their own direction for the new timeline. Now the reason why I say Shijenko will most likely not make it into this game, is due to Cassie's ending in Mortal Kombat X, where he's beaten to a bloody pulp by the teenager, as well well as an arrest cleaning house. Shijenko seems to be one of those errors from the previous timeline that they want to erase, so Shijenko will probably be gone, and I know there's going to be a lot of people who are in conflict with this idea, because Shijenko was one of the people that was responsible for bringing Onaga back, but might I remind you that this is the timeline where the new deadly alliance seems to be Liu Kang and Kitana, so there has been a lot of changes. Hell Raiden didn't become Dark Raiden till Deception, so a lot of stuff in this new timeline has happened much earlier than the old one. We could even see Goro being the catalyst for Inaga's return instead of Reptile. There are many different possibilities, and there's many different ways to work around Shijenko's character, so I would say the likelihood of him returning in another game is in fact extremely low. Now at number 3 we have Jax. This one should be seen as fairly obvious, because during the entirety of Mortal Kombat X, after Jax was no longer a revenant, he was very much so put to the sideline, wanting to live a much quieter life, due to how crazy things became when Outworld and all of this kind of stuff began happening, he didn't really sign up for this. So the likelihood of Drax not really returning in the next game as a playable character is extremely high. Now if we're taking character endings into account, there have been two different hints of Drax being killed. First being his own ending, and the second being Sonya's ending, where he's both killed by a bullet wound. Now ladder endings are certainly what ifs and foreshadowing for the next game, but if these two do prove to be true, then Drax might be killed off in the next game. And like I mentioned earlier on in this video, NRS isn't afraid to kill off their characters now, as they want to get rid of the older characters to bring in new ones. Hence why ever since the new timeline began, many of the older characters that don't have a large fan base or that are from the 3D era onward are either written off or are killed, so I would say at this point that there is a very large chance that Jax will get killed off. Now at number 2 we have Reiko. Now though this character isn't as well known, he does have a rather large fan base, so it does make me quite sad to see him here on this list. Now unlike the previous three characters here on this list, Reiko is 100% dead, as in brain splattered dead, as in his face is gone. 
dead. Now, some of you may have not known about this, but Reiko died in the Mortal Kombat X comics, which might also add is the best Mortal Kombat storyline ever put together. Just putting that out there and I recommend every single person here who was watching this to read it. It's really damn good. Now what happened to Reiko was, he was manipulating many people through the use of blood magic, as he was given a premonition of how he was destined to become a blood god. So through the use of Kami Dogus, he would influence people through the use of blood magic. And through some very incredible battles, Reiko was indeed successful in obtaining the ability to become a blood god. He was extremely powerful. But this did not quite last, as he felt his body tearing itself from the inside out. Reiko had in fact been tricked by Havoc before killing him and obtaining his goal, which was the Amulet of Shinnok. So I feel at this point, Reiko's appearance here is 100% guaranteed to not happen, which is actually extremely sad, as people did like Reiko. But his death wasn't in vain, as he did play part in one of the best Mortal Kombat storylines of all time. Now at number one, we have the Chaos Cleric Havoc who was also featured within the comics. Now in the original timeline, Havoc was a character with an extremely interesting concept, but unfortunately due to the oversaturation of characters in the game, they were never quite able to fully flesh him out. But in the comics, this is where he really did shine. See, much like Reiko on this list, he played a humongous part in the comics, and was actually the one to orchestrate everything, including the manipulation of Reiko, which led to the control of the Thunder God Raiden, and the entirety of Melina's forces. He was essentially the backbone of the comics, and although Reiko was kind of put in the forefront of being the main villain, it was Havoc that was in fact orchestrating everything from behind the line. He was the true mastermind, and that's what makes him such an exceptional villain from the comic, which makes me feel extremely sad, as he will not be returning in Mortal Kombat 11. You see, despite obtaining the Amulet of Shinnok, and pretty much decimating many of Earthrealm's and Outworld's forces, he would be defeated by one Hanzo Hisashi, who would decapitate the Chaos Cleric, and throw him into the Nether Realm where he would be killed by Quan. G. Now Havoc isn't as well known as Reiko, but I will say he does have a fan base, and due to his amazing role in the comics, I believe it makes him earn the number one spot in this list, which is both a good thing and a bad thing, because he rightfully so does deserve this spot, but it makes me ultimately extremely sad to know that this character pretty much won't return, as he's well, dead. But yeah, this pretty much wraps up my list guys. I hope you all enjoyed this, and tell me down in the comments below what characters do you see not returning in the next game. I hope you guys all enjoyed this, and I have a few more Mortal Kombat videos planned. The next top 5's list is tied between the top 5 cyborgs in Mortal Kombat, or top 5 returning female characters we want to see in Mortal Kombat 11. Please let me know in the comments below which one would you like to see first. Also, our 2 year anniversary for this channel is coming up, so please let me know in the comments below what would you guys like to see. Possibly a Q Q&A? Please let me know in the comments below as well. Now if possible guys, let's try getting this video to about 750 likes. It's a great way of supporting my channel, as YouTube's algorithm is pretty much broken. Now as always guys, please comment, like, subscribe, and share this video with everyone you know. Please take care and I will see you all next time.